Pastor Greg, on Thursday. We saw how Jesus' birth was the fulfillment of many prophecies. And two, we've already alluded to in the first couple of chapters, the prophecy from Isaiah, which said that the virgin will give birth to a son and he will save their people and he will be Emmanuel, God with us. In fact, many churches are called Emmanuel, God with us. It's something that we hang on to, this wonderful promise that Jesus is with us. Not just He's not just with us for a time on earth, but he continues to be with us. And of course, we heard the next prophecy being fulfilled that Jesus was born in Bethlehem because that was what was expected. When Herod asked, where will this Messiah, this new king be born? It was Bethlehem. And so Matthew goes to great lengths to explain that Jesus is fulfilling not just a portion, but every single prophecy that was that was um, spoken in relation to the Messiah is fulfilled in the coming of Jesus. And now, here comes the big event. We said before that Luke focuses on the Christmas narrative and the joy of the angels and the light, which is totally fantastic. Matthew's focus is now the fact that the Magi come and worship him. In other words... God has miraculously sent his word to people outside of the community, outside of the Jewish community, that here is the Messiah. These people have traveled for an incredible amount of time and a massive distance so they could come and they could make their declaration that this baby is different, that this baby is destined to be not just king of Israel, but this... It, child is destined to be saviour of the world. They may not have known all of that at the time, but they knew that something um, extraordinary, something supernatural was happening. And it was interesting because you see how God is guiding them. Yes, he's first off, he's guiding them by the star, because this was an important act. And in the early church, the Magi coming to worship Jesus, known as the Festival of the Epiphany, was a far greater festival than East, uh, sorry, than Christmas because this is where Jesus is revealed. Epiphany simply means revealed, shown. Oh, wow, discovery. And here Jesus is revealed. The Magi's declaration is his revelation to the world that th this is the child that we've been waiting for. And they worship him. This is just a baby and they are worshipping this baby. So in this passage here that I'm going to read, we see how the Magi are not um, are not distracted and they are not um, they don't deviate from their path. They have come to worship the new King. They have come to bring their gifts. They have come to make a declaration to join with all of of, of what they believe the whole nation. But greater than that, um, all of heaven celebrates what's happened and they through their actions make a comment if you like that is greater than anybody in that community could make so we'll um, have a look at these verse and this is Matthew chapter 2 uh, beginning at verse 10 just three verses 10 to 12 when they saw the star they were overjoyed on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. We pray. Lord, just as often, often um, you are known and your works and deeds are recognised, by people outside of our communities, people who don't know you well but recognise that something special has happened. We see here that the Magi, as they come to worship you, recognise that something extraordinary is going on. Lord, may we be overtaken with wonder and awe. 
may we recognise something extraordinary in you and your presence with us. May we never take you for granted, but be amazed each day as you walk with us. In your name we pray. Amen.